only 40,000 persons watches the entire first test match at Perth. Hello, everyone. This is the Cricket Forum. Good morning or good afternoon, and thank you for tuning in. I want to apologize for the late start. There were technical difficulties, and I really do apologize that for the late start. I always try to be on time, so I want to really apologize for starting late. Before the start of this series, this test series, many have seen it as some glorified warm-up matches for Australia before they take on South Africa in the test matches that follows the West Indies matches. Only over the five days at Perth, only 40,000 persons watch the entire match over the five days. I challenge you that there will be 40,000 persons in Adelaide for the first day on Thursday. Because this West Indies team have won many, many fans with their performances in this test match. The bowling obviously was lacking. The bowling did not perform up to standard. They bowled containing, but they did not bowl enough wicket-taking delivery. And so Australia, in this entire match, only lost six wickets for over 700 runs. I think 770, about 790 runs. In this entire test match, Australia only lost six wickets for about 790 runs. The bowling was not up to par. But the batsmen batted more than 200 overs in the match. The batsmen batted more than 200 overs in the match. And though, though that is in large part to Brathwaite and Chanda Paul, we saw some resistance from Brooks and Blackwood. And in this final innings last night, we saw some resistance from Alzari Joseph and Rustin Chase. So the West Indies performance have won many arts and mind over this last day, over this test match. Many persons never thought that this match was going to go into a fifth day. Many never thought that it was going into a fourth day. We had hope that the match would have gone into the fifth day. If you recall, when I was previewing this match before the start of the test match and I was picking my team, I had said, that if the match lasts until lunch on the fifth day, I'll be satisfied. And then I later adjusted it to tea on the fifth day. And by yesterday, we were having a little hope. We were holding out hope that we would hold on for a draw. Some of you in this community also thought that we could push for a win. But that was not my opinion. And that was not the opinions of some of the persons in the community. But the wonderful community we are, we are allowed to have different opinions. We are allowed to have different opinions. So West Indies in their second innings made 333. We lost the match by 164 runs. So as you see there, we scored 626 runs in the match. We, Bradway made 110 in the second innings. Chase 55 and Chanda Paul 45 and Joseph 43. Brathwaite test average is 35 overall. But should Brathwaite end this career with a test average of say 40, 45? Will he be called one of the great West Indian openers of all time? Is he pushing towards that category of one of West Indies great openers? Mark you, he is in a team that is very weak. The Greenwich, the Ains, the Federicks, the Weeks, those top line openers, they were in very strong, dominant West Indies team. What about the fact that Brathwaite is batting with more pressure than all of these other greats? He knows that once he is out, 
more time than not, the middle is going to crumble. And that's what happened again. Except for the innings of Chase and Alzari Joseph, West Indies may not have reached 300. But it's a team effort. The team reached 300, and we should congratulate them. I think it was a creditable performance from the West Indies team. I am disappointed we lost the match. I am disappointed we did not hold on for a draw. But I am almost sure that more than 80% of us are not upset because we are satisfied with the way the guys fought. And they did fought and they did push Australia to the fifth day. And I'm telling you, there were times in this match when Australia were a little concerned. Maybe that ultimate the concern or not that huge pressure, but there were times in this match when they were concerned that they might not get the victory. Because in time past, Australia have struggled to bowl out teams in the fourth innings. So I'm saying that I think it was a very, very creditable performance from the West Indies team in this match. And we should, we in this community, I'm certain if we had run a poll last week, Sunday at this time, and asked, who do we think we're going to win the test match? I am almost certain that 85% of us said, would said Australia were going to win. So if West Indies are able to last five days against Australia, almost five days, there was just one session and a bit remaining, we should give them credit. Last year, as I showed you the scores in last year match, it's only one of those five matches against England went into the fifth day. Let us give the boys some credit. We expect more and we hope that they will learn from this match and we'll get a better performance in the second test. Remember, I said after the first innings that I expect the team to bat better in the second innings and they did. They scored 50 more runs in the second innings. We hope that they will learn from it. I'm going to have a few quotes from Ralston Chase, but I'm going to read your comments first. I'm going to read your comments. Okay, yes, sir. I There were some technical dis issues, and I, I apologize for being late. I sincerely apologize for being late, sir. Respect, Alicia. Alicia. How are you doing? Good afternoon, Sheldon. Good afternoon, all. Sibia Allen, good afternoon. Um, Sheldon, no West Indies batsman batted with more pressure. Yeah, good point, Sheldon. And, that, and that's the question I'm asking. When you had the pressure, talk to me, Sheldon. Alicia, want to hear from you. Talk to me, Sheldon. When you had the pressure of Brad Wade, is he... Should he consider, be considered one of the great, knowing that the Weeks and the, the Greenwich and the Fedricks and the Ains, they never, and the Alvin Greenwich, well, Alvin Greenwich never played too many test matches, but knowing that these guys, they never played with so much pressure on them. Claude McKay, good afternoon. Claude Murphy, Hill, the last day of the pitch was helpful to the Australian spinners. The Pacers, were average. That is so true. And coming to that, this is why persons like myself, and I've said it Friday night when I made the big announcement, when everyone was asking, how do I know that Marquino Minley was in it? My sources are generally good. And when I came and I announced that Marquino Minley is on his way to Australia, persons were skeptical. But now everyone knows that is there. But one of the things that I said Friday night is that I'm happy for Marquina Minley, but I would have chosen a spinner. So West Indies got another chance to choose a spinner, and they did not choose a spinner. On that fifth day pitch, the pitch was biting, it was turning, it was spitting. 
alliance was all over the, the West Indies batsmen. Even Head, Travis Head, got two wickets for, I think, eight runs or something like that. He bowled eight overs, two for 16 or something like that. Even Travis Head looked better than our off-spinner Chase. Like, I'm not... I am not bashing Chase. I'm just saying the truth. Whether it's because it's a last day pitch or he just looked better, he looks much better than our spinner. Travis Ed, the part-time spinner, looked much better. And talking about Travis Ed, and, and I'm going to do, I'm going to pick my 11 for the test coming on Thursday, tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll pick my 11 or Tuesday. But I have to really consider now if older plays in that team is under threat. Of all the batsmen that got out last night, and older, and, and, and you could criticize every batsman for getting out because you could point out where they went wrong. But older shot was really careless. He should not be driving at a wide ball from Travis Head. I, I did not like that dismissal especially when the skipper and mayors went fairly early and we knew that the new ball was around the corner. Older should have stood up and bat more responsible. I did not like the shot that Older got. He, Ed floated up one outside the half stump. Older came on the front foot, aimed a big drive and nicked off the Simit at first lead. I did not like that. I did not like that. Some comments here from Rust and Chase. The guys tried hard. Thought we were unlucky. I think Manos Lobo Shane has a genie in his pocket. And we, we agreed. We, we agreed that Lobo Chain, Lobo's chain really got away, that he, he was very lucky. And a number of you yesterday in the chat said that Lobo's chain was very lucky. And so here is Chase saying the same thing, that the West Indies was a little unlucky and that Manus Lava Chain was very lucky. You know, when somebody said you have a genie in your pocket, it means that you have luck. In Jamaica, they would say you have a lime in your pocket. You're walking with a lime or something like that. It was a good task to win because it was good, a good batting wicket. Do you think that if West Indies had won the toss and batted first, we would it would change the result of the game? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think. Um, on that first morning, I think the Australian bowling attack is better than the West Indies batting at bowling attack. And I think they would have tested our batsmen more. So I do not think, in my opinion, I do not think that it would have made much of a difference to the result of the game. But I don't know. But I really don't think that Che should have put that in there. Because I don't see our batsmen surviving the way the Australian batsmen survived on the first morning. Remember, at lunch, they were 72 for one with 20 overs, with 20 runs of that 72 coming off chase four overs just before lunch. So the Pacers were bowling very, very well. Would Australian bowlers have tested our batsmen more and probably this match would not have lost five days? I don't know. But I... I I am okay. I don't think Chase, I don't think, think, I don't think Chase should be implying that if we had won the toss, the result would have been better. I don't think he should have applied that. And um, this is very important. This is coming from Ralston Chase, Ralston Chase, this. Once I saw what Lyon did in the West in his first innings, this is Ralston Chase talking. Once I saw what Lyon did in the West Indies first innings, I tried to emulate that. This is what Chase is saying. Once he saw what Lyon did in the West Indies first innings, I tried to emulate that and bowl quicker and put a little more revs on the ball. That's what Chase is saying. So very good. It, it is good in part that he's learning and I hope and because one of the things that I was saying to myself, even before I saw this comment from Chase, is that I wonder, I wonder if Chase is having a talk with Lion. That's one of the things I was saying to myself, even before I saw this comment. So maybe he didn't 
have a talk with Lyon. He didn't. But at least he said that he was watching what Lyon did when the West Indies was batting. And he tried to emulate it. And the wicket he got against Warner, in all honesty, it was a good ball that bounced and turned. And Warner was out caught at forward short leg. That, that is that is that is a fact that it was a good delivery. So it is nice to see that Chase is saying that I watched what Lyon was doing and and tried to emulate him. The final comment from Chase before I take your comment. As the wicket deteriorated, E. Lyon tried, tried to use the rough to put doubt on the batter's mind. So Chase didn't know that he needs to use the rough when the wicket is deteriorating. He didn't know that. I, I, I don't know. Probably he's, he's just saying it. But I would hate to believe that Chase did not know that when the wicket is deteriorating, he needs to use the rough to put pressures on the batsman. I don't know. I just think that he's just saying it. I Because I, I would hate to think that our top spinner, according to Desmond Ains and Jimmy Adams, doesn't know knows that. I'm trying to... I'm just trying to rush through some of the comments here. Clive Smith, older is a bowler, not a batsman. Older as a double century. Yes, Sheldon, but that doesn't mean he cannot drop. What has he done in his last five test matches? I was looking at his record, and I'm going to bring it up his record in the last five. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go as far as his last 10 test matches. When I'm picking the team, either tomorrow or Tuesday, that I want to see play in the match on Thursday, I'm going to bring up Older's record, Sheldon. So you can check it too, Sheldon, and so let me compare it when it comes to picking the team. Very good. Changing lives broadcast. Very good. West Indies stand and fight, and we are proud, and that's why we are not upset. There are times when the West Indies will lose a match, and we'll come here and we'll curse. We are not cursing this time because we're proud of the boys. Yes, I agree. He's a bowler that can bat, not a batsman that can bowl. Right, Clive Smith, and that is my thought process. Should Older be batting after the keeper? Should Older be batting at eight? All those things will come up when I pick the side. Should Older be batting at eight after the keeper and let Older know that he's playing primarily as a bowler? Claude Murphy, Cedric. Welcome to the show, Cedric. Welcome. Why is Chris Gale not being mentioned among the great openers? Um, it, it is not ignoring Chris Gale. You know, when you're doing a live stream like this and you're calling names, you're just calling names that comes to your mind. So it's not about not mentioning Chris Gale. It, it's, it's not about that. Um, uh, yes, Chris Gale is in that list. Chris Gale is in that list. It was not about ignoring Chris Gale. And let, let me tell you something about Chris Gale. When I was a student at Michael, and you remember I brought on Owen Lewin on the show, and that is why I know that Owen Lewin was very instrumental in Chris Gale's life from a young age. When I was a student at Michael doing my teacher's education, because I'm a trained teacher, and while I was pursuing my tertiary program, Chris Gale used to come by Michael as a little 10, 11 year old boy. Owen Lewin used to bring him there. So I would not ignore Chris Gale because I'm close to Chris Gale from he was a toddler, so to speak. I know him from he was a toddler. He used to bowl to me. I used to, well, I never used to bowl to him, but he used to bowl to me because I was in my early 20s then and he used to come and turn over his arm. So from then we know that he could bat it very well. I play matches with, with Chris Gale. I remember I was playing a match with him at Maxfield Park when he and I was batting and uh, I was blamed for running, running, running him out. I don't think I did. I just think it was miscommunication. So I did not willingly leave out Chris Gale. It's just that it is a live show, and it's the name that came to mind that you call. But Chris Gale is one of those great batsmen, great West Indies openers. Must give credit to Roach for trying to bat. He was clearly limping. Yeah, that is true. I think he got a one ball, but the fact that he came out to bat was creditable. And it shows the determination in this West Indies team. In the past, in the past, there have been West Indies teams that would have thrown in the towel. And so it shows that this team is the most 
is a more determined team. And this team is really playing for Simmons in his last match as West Indies coach. And we must continue to support the coach and the team that is down there. Clive Smith, yes, Chris is one of the best and he played all three formats. It, it's sad. No, I and again, I said, this is a live broadcast. I just call names that come to mind. And I did not say these were the great West Indies openers. I say openers like, you know, I did not leave out Chris Gale name. Chris Gale is one of those because of all of those open openers, Chris Gale have 333. And I know Chris Gale from he was a little boy in short pants, so to speak. I know him very well. So it was, it was just that I was calling names that comes to mind, that came to my mind then. I was not leaving out Chris Gale. No, I am not one of those persons. Now, in the second, the other test match that is going on, you would recall that I said yesterday there could still be a result in this test match. I'd said that if England get the other three Pakistan a wicket for 50 runs, then they will try and make another 350 and give Pakistan 400 to chase on the last day. It never went quite like that. England, I think Pakistan pushed on, got another 80 runs and were bowled out for 579. England, England went to bat and scored a quick fire 264. I think they scored at 7.5 runs per over. 264 for seven. And Stoke then declared setting Pakistan 343 to win. By the end of day four, Pakistan were 80 for two. And interestingly, interestingly, Barbara Azam was what is one of those batsmen that is out. So Barbara Azam is out. Pakistan is 80 for two. They need another 263 runs to save the match or to win the match. There, there will be a winner in this match. I don't think it will be a draw. I think England will either bowl out Pakistan or Pakistan get the runs. But one of the Pakistani openers is retired Earth. Don't know if he's going to come back to bat. But interestingly, for the first time since I'm watching England, I don't remember if it ever happened before. But James Anderson did not bowl the new ball for Pakistan in this, for England, sorry. James Anderson did not bowl the new ball in this Pakistan second innings. England started their bowling with Stoke and Oli Robinson, and they did not pitch up a ball. They went short and hard into the pitch. They changed tactics. They were not looking for swing or anything. The, the reason behind that is that, uh, apart from trying the short ball tactics, they want to rough, scuff up the ball as early as possible because they think that the sooner they get it to start reverse swinging, it's the more likely they'll be able to bowl out Pakistan. So as I said yesterday that there could be a result. I did. I was not expecting a result. To be honest, I expected the match to peter out into a draw. But with Pakistan needing 263 to win on the final day, they are either going to get that runs or they're going to be bowled out. So without rain, and there, there seems to be no rain anywhere near Royal Pindi. So I think that this match there will be a result in this match. Well, Ben Stoke and McCallum, they are making some brave decisions because some persons are saying that they should not have declared that early. Just before I come to your comment, I just want to remind you that at 1 p.m. in the next 16 minutes Jamaica time and 2 p.m. in Antigua, that the West Indies women will be playing their first ODI against England. And the cost of going into the match is just $9. The match will be on YouTube. So we'll be out of here before 1 o'clock Jamaica time. The match will be on YouTube. So you should watch that match and support the West Indies women. If you are in Antigua, please go and support the women. Remember, it is a top five in the Super League table that will qualify for the 2025 World Cup. Now, the 2025 Women World Cup. West Indies is currently sitting at number five on the table, in the women table. So please, if you're an, in Antigua, please go and support the women team. And when you're watching on YouTube, 
please send positive vibes in the comment section to the women. So in a few minutes time, the West Indies women will start their match in, in Antigua. And India, India lost to Bangladesh by one wicket this morning. I think that Bangladesh, India batted first and made 186, as you see there. Bangladesh were 136 for nine in the 40th over, 39.3 over. When I think Siraj had Ma Mahud, Mahmud, yes, Siraj got Mahmud out leg before in the third ball of the 40th over, 39.3 overs. And at, this, and at that time, Bangladesh were 136 for nine, chasing 186, 187 to win. And Mahidi and Rahman see them through, and Pakistan got up to beat India by one wicket. So the guy who was on the show yesterday from England, what's, from India, what's his name, Das, who were criticizing West Indies cricket. I hope him hug up this one. Do you remember him? I hope him hug up this one. He should come back. He should come back. He should be here now. Can Bangladesh beat India? And yes, Roid Sharma was in the side. Virat Kohli was in the side. It shares I was in the side. It was a strong India side. And Bangladesh beat them. So that's who was here yesterday criticizing West Indies cricket. And you remember I told him to leave West Indies cricket alone. He was on to bring positive vibes to the show. Even if he hug up this now, because the Bangladesh beat them there. So I'm going to hug up this. So Bangladesh beat India by one wicket earlier this morning. Clive Simit, do you think we need a bowling coach? We have a bowling coach, and, and that's the way international cricket is going nowadays. They have bowling coach, they have batting coach, they have coach, they have assistant coach. Some of these teams that are traveling, they travel with 15 backroom staff. 15, all sorts of persons, physio, masseuse, doctor. We have a bowling coach. Is he doing a good job? Have we seen improvement in the bowlers? I think we have seen slight improvement in the bowlers. But it goes back to something that I always, I, I have been saying. Roddy Eswick, who is our bowling coach, do not have the, the power that he needs to have. And I can tell you this. I know this. What, there was a time when Roddy Eswick, either earlier this year or late last year, said to one of our fast bowlers, that fast bowler doesn't play test cricket, he plays white ball cricket. I need to teach you something. And the bowler said to Eswick, man, just give me the ball to bowl. That's what happened. So I don't know if he has the authority and the power that we want him to have. And that's why I, I always said that the coaches need the power. The coaches need the power. The players have too much power. Yes, Bangladesh did be Ab Abdullah, are you from Bangladesh? You must be a very happy man. Bangladesh did beat India by one wicket. It is interesting that England declare with less than 400 to get and so much time in the game. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. What Stoke is saying is that for England to win the match, they have to dangle a carrot. I think that's his exact word. Um, I don't have the quote that I could put up on the screen. But to the best of my memory, when he was asked that question, he said, the pitch is so placid that he has to dangle a carrot and let the Pakistani batsmen believe that they can get the runs. That's, 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 that's what he said. He has to dangle a carrot. Thank you, Sheldon. Fitzpatrick, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Claude Murphy is telling Fitzpatrick, thank you. Please be, please, more comment on the West Indies bowling. My first time on your program. I think we need some aggressive and wicked taking bowlers. Yes, Clive Smith, I, in this match, we did not see the cutting edge that we expect. Joseph, for one, looks short of work. Those who follow the program and you say you are the first time, welcome Clive Smith. I have always said, and the record is there to show, that Roach 
does not is not as effective away from the West Indies as is in the West Indies. Someone hearing me and they made the comment that it was not only Roach, but Olda is also less effective than Roach away from the West Indies. And those are two of our frontline bowlers. The other thing too is that when we pick Chase to go to Australia as our top line spinner, we should not have picked Chase because of his batting ability to bowl spin, but we should have picked the best spinner. I, I think we should have gone with either Motti or Carrier, but others will have their different views. And in this community, we expect we express our different views. There are those who think that we should have gone with Cornwall. Because Cornwall was originally in the squad before they took him out. Cornwall was named in the original squad before he was taken out. So we do need bowlers with more of a cutting edge. We, need, we do need more bowlers who are wicked-taking bowlers. Joseph looks short of work. I believe that Joseph is one of our best bowlers, if not our best bowler this time. He consistently bowl above 140, but he looks short of work, and I expect him to perform better in the second test. The other persons that I would like to see West Indies get in this team is Shannon Gabriel. I really think that a fit Shannon Gabriel is good for West Indies cricket. We need to pick our best spinner. We need to get Shannon Gabriel fit to partner Joseph. And there's a young man from Barbados. I'm not saying that he's test material. I think his name is Leacock. He bowled right arm spin. I think West Indies should be looking at that guy for some development. Lee Cock from Barbados, I think that they should be looking at him for development. I don't think he's ready yet. I just think that Carrier, I have a 50-50 about Carrier. I think Carrier would be good for the one day, but I don't know about Tess. I need to look at Carrier some more. I hope that, Clive, I gave you an insight into the thought process. Thank you for your question. Joseph has been putting a lot of time into his batting. I hope it does not affect his bowling. Okay, Murphy, we, all, we, we do hope so too. We, we saw his batting being improved, and we, we, we do hope so too. Changing lives broadcast. West Indies have my support until my last breath. That is the spirit. We'll always support the team that is picked. We must always, so even if our favorites are not there, we must support the team. We need wicked takers bowlers. That is true. Australia only lose six wickets while making more than 700 runs in the test match. We really need some wicked taking bowlers. And that has been our disappointment in this match because the batsmen made 626 runs. We should have been more competitive. Even if we lose the match, as we did, we lost the match, with the batsmen making 626 runs in a test match, we should have been more competitive. We should not be, we should be more be looking for a victory instead of hoping for a draw. The batsmen did well. And but although there are some batsmen who probably should not be in this team, but overall, the batting team as a unit had done well in this test match. Supernova, welcome to the show. Six minutes before the West Indies match kickoff, West Indies test team is in a much better position than the white ball squad. So true. As you saw my topic there, West Indies won many fans. They won many arts. They won many mind. And I said at the beginning, Supernova 22, only 40,000 persons in total watched this test match. The match coming up in Hadley on Thursday, 40,000 alone will be at the first day. This is the improvement the team had made. Many persons never thought that this match was going to last four days, plus after lunch on the fifth day, touching tea. So the, white, the red ball team is in a far better place than the white ball team. One of the reasons that I heard people are saying is that the red ball team is really playing for pride, while the, the 
the white ball team, they are cocky and arrogant because of all the money that is involved in T20 cricket. This is a fact. When you play a test match for the West Indies, you get 8,000 US dollars to play that test match. Like the Abu Dhabi T10 that just finished T10. So they are on the field for two hours. They are players, they play 10 matches. Somebody like I call a name Russell. Russell played 10 matches. And he get $10,000 per match to play in the Abu Dhabi T10. So that's the difference between the white ball team. And you have a lot of, some will get more, some will get less. But you know that players like Russell, the Odin Simit, the Poor, and the Ed Myers, their figures are up in the 8, 10,000 per match to play in the T10. And that is probably one of the challenges with the test team compared to the white ball team. The test team only get eight thousand US dollars to play five days of cricket. These guys are getting five, six, ten thousand dollars to play two hours of cricket. And when you go to the Indian Premier League, some of these guys like Puran and Older and Shepherd and Etmaya last year and Russell, they get more than a hundred thousand dollars per match, hundred thousand US dollars per match to play one match. So you see the difference. The team is well led. And the captain put up his hand first and they all rally around him. Love what I saw this year. I love it from here. I think this is the first test match we have been losing. This is a sixth test match we play since the start of the year. And this is the first one that we have lost. So the team is playing good test cricket. And as you saw in my comment, if you look in my comment section on the home page, I asked, I said, that Brathwaite is now a genuine superstar in Test cricket. Brathwaite, Craig Brathwaite, and I'm not making any apology for that. Craig Brathwaite, the West Indies opener and captain, is now a genuine, genuine superstar in Test cricket. Abdullah, you're from Guyana. Welcome. I've said many times I was in Guyana for this, the CPL and they treated me well. So welcome to the show, Abdullah. Thanks, Cedric Douglas. Explanation noted. Thank you for that, Cedric. I, I respect that kind comment from you, Cedric. We need a better middle order. True. And give credit to Sheldon Simit. Giovanni Reed, give credit to Sheldon Simit. Sheldon Simit had predicted that once the top order goes, then the middle order will fall away. We really need a, a better middle order. And we hope that after this test series, West Indies will take a serious look at someone like Brandon King. He's the only name that can come to mind right now. We hope that Shea Hope or Shy Hope, whatever you call him, we hope he can get back into some red ball form. We really hope that Hope can get back into some red ball form. Because I think that if Hope is in form and King that would be a good two persons to have in our middle order. But in all honesty, over the last three years, all batting in red ball cricket have fallen off. And we pray and hope that he gets back into some red ball form. We need to play more red ball cricket, as most persons will agree. Yes, Chase, Chase batting was fairly decent in this match. But Chase got dropped out of the squad because he has a run of poor scores. About 10 matches without passing 20. West Indies for life. True, Abdullah, true. And I know you guys support Guyana strongly. Sheldon Smith, Supernova 22. Sheldon is reporting, re replying to Supernova 22 here. Sheldon Smith, Supernova 22. Sheldon at all. Oh. Supernova 22 is replying to Sheldon Smith. Good for his confidence, but they had a bomb squad and it's T20 cricket. Not much weight to him, to it for me. Just open his sticks in the maroon. All that is disappointment. Now the match is coming up. So thank you all for your comments. Thank you all for tuning in. Please slash a like on the video, share and subscribe. And please now go and watch the West Indies women match versus england they all need our support thank you until tomorrow take care of yourself and take care of your loved one god bless you all and see you then please slash a like on the video share and subscribe thank you